you got to jump in the shower, put the dog in the crate. If you've got to go to work, put the dog in the crate. If you're taking a power nap throughout the day, put the dog in the crate. Crate, 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 crate. <laughs> What's going on everybody and welcome to another video with me, Bob from Lone Duck, and this is our new puppy, Prairie. She's around nine weeks old and we have been instilling and working on crate training. And I beg you to crate train your dog. There's enough folks out there that, that don't want to crate train their dog, that don't crate train their dog, that think a pen in their kitchen or what have you is a good idea and I will teach you in this episode or video that it is better to crate train, better for the dog, better for you, better for your home. You'll be much happier. So crate training, but first do me a solid, click subscribe so you can follow along on the little prairie dog's progress as she grows up from baby to hunting dog to hunt test competitor mother hopefully and more so tune in subscribe thumbs up me all that jazz if you want a thumbs down go find somebody else's video now into crate training positives of crate training one when you are not around or you're jumping in the shower or you're making breakfast cooking dinner busy this is a place where you know that they're not getting in trouble i can put her in here and know that if I'm over there making dinner, she's safe and sound. If I can't give my puppy my undivided attention, then I shouldn't have her out. Two, it's a great way for them to have downtime in a safe place. So sometimes, this is like a sidebar hunting dog thing, but sidebar, sometimes dogs get almost overstimulated, over socialized, over exhausted throughout the day by being able to walk around and hang out, especially these COVID puppies. You know, I don't know if we're going to watch this five years now. Now people will be like, what's COVID? But right now it's pretty pertinent, but everybody's home. And so their young puppies are outside, out of the crate all day long. And then at five o'clock, you go to throw a bumper swarm and they don't really care because they've been mentally stimulated this whole time and they're tired by 5 p.m. So the crate is a great place for them to just have some downtime unwind, catch up on some sleep, and then come out and be ready to rock and roll. But this is a great place. So I'm gonna put her in here. Count. That a girl. Count. Good dog. Now, I'm gonna grab my trusty Yukadooba, baby. Come here, girl. Good girl. Come here. Count. That a girl. Every single time I put her in here and take her out, um, or excuse me, when I put her in here, I'm just going to use a kettle command. So even if I have to physically put her in or do what I did with a treat. Come here, girl. Good dog. Hey, Ken. Good dog. Not rocket science, folks, but it works. Repetition, 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 repetition. She's going to go in looking for the treat instead of running in after the treat. Um, now, back to safe zone. This is not a negative. This is not a timeout. We humanize canines and think that the dog's being naughty. Let's put them in timeout, put them in their crate. Then you'll think like, well, I don't want to have a, be a negative. So you leave them out too often. When then they get into trouble. And then now you got to put them in timeout. It doesn't work. Dogs don't understand that mentality only we do. So this is a positive place because it's their safety zone. If you need a timeout, if they're driving up the wall with the kids, the other dog, you know, whatever the case may be, they're just catching that second wind and going crazy. This is your timeout, not the dogs. They won't understand it. It's totally okay to be like, I need a break, puppy. I need a break. You go in here. Um, I quickly mentioned before, but if you got to jump in the shower, put the dog in the crate. If you've got to go to work, put the dog in the crate. If you're taking a power nap throughout the day, put the dog in the crate. Crate, 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 crate. They're not gonna have accidents, which we'll get to in a second. Um, they're not gonna get into trouble. When the dog is a puppy, is out of sight, you can bet your bottom dollar that they're getting into trouble, okay? Now, let's talk about crate training in terms of housebreaking and minimizing accidents in the crate. Uh, oh, another way to make the crate or kennel a positive is to be 
feed them breakfast, lunch, dinner, and they're great. They're going to love it. If that's, that's one of the places they eat, you're good to go, baby. Now, uh, minimizing accidents. There's a few things I do. One, I take away space. So if they have uh, this, let's say this whole gunner town, they got this whole thing where they can sleep here and pee over here, then they're going to do it. If this little baby has to go, her bladder is the size of a golf ball. If she's got to go, she's going to go over here and then be clean and comfortable over here. So if I take it and make it this big, and now she just has a place to turn around and lay down and go to sleep, maybe chew on a bone or something, then she's going to keep her area clean. That's what dogs want. They don't want to live in a mess. So they want to stay clean. If they can go there, they will. If you have it small, that's better. So as they grow, you can make it bigger, bigger, bigger until she's old enough and has be become housebroken and crate trained where she isn't going to have an accident. Then you can give her more space. But just incrementally give her more space as she grows. Things in the crate. Soft toys and towels and blankets, I don't do. Uh, a, it's choking hazard, eating hazard where it can ball up in their intestines and you've got to go have surgery. Oh, right, girl. Yeah. Uh, which is terrible. Not good. So let's not allow that to happen. Okay. Um, I'll put Nyla bones, Kongs with peanut butter, frozen treats, things like that for her to work on and play while she's in here. But I'm not allowing anything like a plush, you know, uh, stuffed animal. No go. They'll rip that sucker to shreds hour two that you're going to work and they will have eaten it by the time you get home. Uh, towels. Not only is it a choking slash eating hazard, but it also, if they pee, go pate on that towel, it's going to sink to the bottom. It's going to absorb it all the way to the bottom. Now the top layer is dry and they'll sleep on that dry layer and, but they've really actually peed themselves. So it's going to do a couple of things in four or five days. It's going to start to smell bad, but it's going to be four or five days that you didn't know that they've been having accidents. You've been thinking they've been doing great and that they're learning really they're regressing because man, if I just pee here and wait 10 minutes, I'll be dry again. So you're actually regressing. So, that's why I don't do it. Again, we humanize these guys a little too much. And as much as I love her and I want her to be comfortable and happy, I also know what's better for her, which is not chewing and tearing and terrorizing and peeing and pooping and all that jazz. This is a positive place. This is her safety zone. I create a safety zone for her and she's happy to go in. She doesn't know any different. Yeah. Um, at night, she's in here. She's not sleeping in my bed. A lot of folks, you know, the first night, two, three, four, five, six nights, puppy's going to cry while well, you're sleeping in bed. Um, you got to fight through it. Tough it out. You got to maybe go in there and tell them to be quiet. No bark. Quiet. Quiet. And then go back to bed and they start whining again. No, quiet. Quiet. I mean, teach them how to be. Barking doesn't get what they want, which is coming out and sleeping in bed with us. Um, they're missing their litter mates. It's a whole new environment. Of course, they're going to be whiny, barky, nervous, scared. This is their safety zone. Build good habits. Uh, final thoughts. Use it. It's the best tool to help house break, to help maintain control when you've got a crazy house during dinner and kids and, and whatever. This is their, their safe spot. Use it, please. If you liked it, leave me a comment. If you have questions, leave me a comment. Tune in. Uh, thank you. And until the next video with old Prairie Dog, we'll see you on the flip side. Uh -huh.